Okay. We're having a, a small intermezzo because we're in the midst of the suitable server configuration, but it has turned out that now is a good time to uh, give the visitors the conference present, which is a new syllable desktop live CD. Yeah. Okay. Drum roll. <coughs> the, the, the current live CD is from uh, syllable 064. Oh, cool. <laughs> <laughs> cool. This is the new uh, syllable 066 live CD. And uh, it, it's still a, a sneak preview. It's not, it, it's not entirely correct yet. Uh, it, it, it works quite well, but there are some uh, system settings that you can't make. Is there a difference between the, the version on this disk and the website? Yeah, because the, the last live CD on the website is 064. Okay. So we have even skipped syllable 065. And uh, I was just telling in, in Dutch why that is. Uh, people have been concerned why there hasn't been a new live CD for so long. Well, the live CD, the live CD was a, a contributed project originally <coughs> by a Danish guy, and uh, a few years ago he left the project, and we never got the, the build scripts, and I never had uh, enough time to make a new live CD a priority because the the last live CD is frankly working quite well. And uh, so I never made it a priority before now, and uh, it's, uh, it was a bit difficult to make a new one. It turns out there's even a, a patch, the syllable that's used on the live CD that's not checked into syllable, so we're, we're missing that patch. And uh, this, this live CD is not entirely correct yet. So this is a, a sneak preview of the new live CD. But this is a, a live CD of the last stable syllable release, so this is uh, 066. But I've put a, a, a few newer parts in it already. It has, a, uh, it has a newer boot menu, which is more extensive for uh, hardware troubleshooting. So you can test uh, for problems on your machine. And uh, it's, a, it's a good way to see if your hardware is suitable for really installing Syllable 066. <coughs> I'll have to, we'll have to correct some more things after the conference and then we'll release it. So that'll, uh, that'll take a while longer. So this is a sneak preview present for the visitors today. Some of them are, are trying it on their laptops now. We've now got two laptops here running the new Syllable 066 live CD. So far, I don't know if Syllable is not with wireless or something. No, no. So we don't have a network connection here, but almost everything else in it works already. And, uh, Apart from the, uh, the, the newer start menu, newer than in Syllable 066, uh, there's a fixed version of Webster in there because the Webster, the web browser in 066, uh, uh, it has the wrong path to its cookies, if I remember correctly. So you can't use cookies without a fix, and this, this is a fixed Webster, so this one should work with cookies again. And uh, uh, later this afternoon, we're going to show uh, Rebel 3 on Syllable Desktop. And we're going to, to show a new binding between Rebel and the Perl networking library. That is just new, created last month. <coughs> and uh, that's already on this live CD. So if you uh, open a terminal on this live CD, you can start Rebel. Well, I'll, we'll do a demonstration of that on screen later. We really have to get on with the syllable server configuration. <coughs> uh, we have to uh, activate the web server. And uh, all the web server and all the configuration is there in syllable server. And here it says uh, 
uh, that there's a uh, at the I'll put it at the top of the screen. There's uh, an, an init script, which is uh, again a simple text file that you can edit. So we'll go to the other virtual console again. Commander again. And we go over the uh, index directory of all the installed software packages. And then we have uh, an index of all the tasks. And tasks have uh, subfolders for hooks at particular times in syllables uh, processing. And we need the start script. So this is an index of the start scripts on this system. And then we see the start script for the web server. And as you can see, we also, in the same index, we also have the start script for the FTP server that we also need. Now, because it's a text file, you can have a, a few notes in there. So it's really very simple. You only have to remove the hash to activate the line that starts uh, that starts Rebel 2 and uh, that starts the, the, the Cheyenne web server script that's written in Rebel 2. And if we continue with the manual, you'll have pretty much the same uh, instructions for the FTP server here. And it also tells you to activate it in the start script in the same place. Again, very similar. Just activate the line that starts the server. And that's it, really. There's a lot more, there are a lot more hints in the manual about how to use the servers, how to access them remotely. We'll see that in a minute. And there's information about other servers. But this is really it. I can leave the pager with Q. And with Control D I can log out from this console. And we're still in the other one. So we've done only three quite simple things from the manual. Uh, we've put the, the network configuration on a static IP address because it's going to be a server. And we've activated the web server and we've activated the FTP server. And they're all pre-configured. And the SSH server is already running. So now uh, you could uh, start the start scripts manually or you could uh, give the command to uh, restart uh, the network it's also in the manual but the simplest way to restart after making a number of changes is to reboot of course We should soon see the web server start. There's the web server. First Rebel 2. And then Rebel 2 starts uh, Cheyenne.
If I look at the network configuration now, you see that we're at the static IP address that was in the configuration file. And if I look at the processes that are running, there are several more now. And um, at two thirds from the top is still the SSH server. Um, the FTP server is halfway, just behind INEPD. And just behind that is uh, Rebel 2 Core. And you see that Rebel 2 has started the Cheyenne web server. And uh, Rebel has, in the current version of Rebel 2, has two processes. So there are two Cheyenne processes. And at the bottom there are uh, four Taskmaster processes, uh, doubled, because each Rebel process has two processes. Uh, so there are four taskmasters running, and they're all in separate processes. So you have a, a, a main Cheyenne process that is taking the requests. And then you have um, uh, four taskmaster processes that really handle the requests. And that makes the system very scalable and very responsive, because the main Cheyenne process only has to take the requests from the network and then passes them on to a, a free taskmaster for processing and if the if the server gets heavily loaded uh, it will dynamically make more taskmaster processes so you have very good utilization of multi-core machines if you run it on that well there is some more to do and uh, I'll go to the manual again Surprise visitor. Um, to, uh, to do this properly, uh, we need to make an extra user account. And that is in the configuration part of the manual. I will make a demo account for a demo website. Creating, creating an extra user account. Since I've pressed the wrong button. I don't seem to be able to restore the screen, so I'll open it again. Create an extra user account. I press the weird button there. User add. Uh, we want a home directory with the M option. We don't need a special name, we're just going to call it demo. Doing. User add with superdo. Do want a home directory, and we'll call the account and the home directory demo. And then I need to set a password for demo. Uh, let's 
called password demo as well. You we'll probably complain that it's too short, yes. So we'll overwrite that we want it anyway. So normally you should choose a longer password because a short password is insecure. Now the effect is that in the home directory is called users in syllable, at least in server now. We now have an extra demo directory for the new home user. It has a new directory with standard desktop folders that we don't need, but it's there. Um, we need to have a look at the Cheyenne configuration. So we go to the second part of the manual again. Server use, web server, running web server. And here it says where the Cheyenne configuration is. <coughs> this is the Cheyenne package, Quartermaster is folded into the Cheyenne directory, so we go into the Cheyenne directory and here is the web server configuration file. No? Okay. I think MC Edit is trying to make a network connection. Yeah, because we've put it at a static IP now, it, it has it thinks there's a network connection. But MC Edit, I don't know why, it's annoying. MC Edit tries to make a network connection when it starts. And when there's no network it takes a long time. cut that out sometime, but I don't know where it is. It's waiting for a network timeout now. Let's check the IP address once more. It's 192, 168, 09. That's where we have to connect to in a while. Ah, there we are. The Cheyenne configuration file. This is a text file in rebel format. And because it's cross-platform, Cheyenne is shipped uh, with uh, Windows files, with uh, Windows line endings. So that's the weird control M that you see at the end. But rebel doesn't care. So it will load it correctly anyway. And MC Edit doesn't really mind either, it's just a bit ugly. But you could remove them. Um, this set uh, is already configured for uh, Software Freedom Day last year when we showed a, a dynamic website in Boron, the open source implementation of Rebel. Here it is. So if you would go there now, and we could do that with the built-in links text web browser. If I go to localhost, it says it can't do it. Yeah. It. I think if you say localhost, you need to put HTTP in front of it. Oh. Yeah. Okay. This is the 
Uh, this is the website that's currently running. And this is a dynamic website served by, uh, by Boron. Boron language, Rebel-like language. But we want to, uh, to replace that with the new demo user. So I'm going to change the path to the, the standard website. This is the new user directory that we created. And within that, I'll put it in a, a subfolder. Let's call it website. And the rest is hopefully still okay. <coughs> we may have to, to add an... Uh, Add a standard HTML index file here to make sure that we can go on the website instead of the Boron site that was running on it. And that should suffice. Uh, we have a static network now, so we must configure it under the default website. But if you're really running on a network, you can use uh, host names. And you can, here's an example of a, a website under a, 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 its own domain name. So you can uh, run multiple virtual hosts on the Cheyenne web server and you can configure them here. So you can have multiple websites under different domain names. But we must work with a static IP now, so we must go to the IP address of the server. So in this case, we're taking the simplest configuration under the, the default site that's being served. Okay, that's the web server configuration. Um, probably have to restart it. Exit the web browser. Now we have the, the web server, if it's, if it's rebooted, we have the web server running with all the configurations we need. And we've seen that we can already access it uh, from the local host. But now we've changed the configuration and there's no website there yet, so now we have to make a website. And we're going to do that on Syllable Desktop, but uh, in the meanwhile, this machine needs to be running. So we'll uh, keep this laptop running with Syllable Server serving the website. And we'll switch to Syllable Desktop. Hey, Sean. New visitor. So Sean? Yeah. And uh, for the internet. And we have net a uh, web server uh, configured to Silver Server. Mm -hmm. And we later we uh, draaien. The web server we don't need to log in now because the, the server is now in a, in a state that we can put it in a corner of the office. And we can leave it running without a monitor, maybe even without a keyboard. Uh, without a graphical environment and without logging in, because we can do that all remotely. And we're going to do that remotely from Silver Desktop. So we're now going to switch to Beamer. I hope it survives that. Here's a, yeah. a sneak preview of the new, preview. new syllable desktop live CD. Uh -huh. 
<laughs> I'm starting the other laptop. I'm getting something. Yeah. So it's a similar configuration with syllable desktop and server installed, but now we need syllable desktop. So now we're uh, switching to uh, a comfortable graphical environment. It starts very fast. I'll remind the viewers once more that this is our classic laptop that is now 13 years old. It's, uh, it was a Windows 98 laptop and it starts uh, very fast 13 years later with syllable desktop on it. Now the thing is, if we look in a terminal first, if we do if config here, just like on the server, uh, you see that the network is not configured because like the server, it's, it's on a, a dynamic DHCP configuration. So we need to change it. Oh, this, uh, it's still in, in Dutch. So for the viewers, I'll first switch the, uh, the language back to English. Ah, Sean Friesen was still there. So new screens that we open will now be in uh, in English. Um, when, just like on the server, we need a static network configuration here. Now in English. First, Ethernet adapter. See, it's on on dynamic configuration, so we switch it to static, and then we need to give our own address. And the server was on this network, so we need to use the same. Copy that for the other fields, and now we need to ch choose a different number. And uh, the server uh, is on 9, and uh, uh, the things the gateway is on 0, so are on 1, uh, 0 is reserved. Uh, so we can't use 1 because the server thinks that's the gateway, which isn't there. Uh, so we could choose 2, or we could choose 10 just behind the server, or we could choose 100. Uh, the net mask is then... For this sort of private network, this is the net mask. And the gateway isn't there, but the server thinks it's on number one, so let's make desktop think the same. It shouldn't matter either way. Now this is slightly unintuitive, because I have to do apply here, and then close it, and then I think I need to do apply here again. Let's see if it works right away. See, it's on the configuration already. Now the only machine that's accessible is the server through uh, the hub that we have on the table here. So the server should respond at 9, and it does. Okay, now let's see what happens when we go there with the web browser. The easiest way to start it is from the welcome document on the desktop.
again the IP number of the server, my own local private network. And you see that uh, Cheyenne responds, but when we did the same uh, locally on the server, it responded with the Boron demo website from Software Freedom Day. But I've changed the configuration of the web server, uh, and we haven't done the new website yet, so Cheyenne now responds with that it can't currently find the default website on the server. So this is Cheyenne's not found page. So now our task is to, to create a website and we want to do that comfortably on syllable desktop. Well, that's all we have to do for the configuration. Uh, I can show the, the SSH server because we, what we can already do on the server, the, the web page is not found, although the web server responds, but the, uh, the SSH server was already running, and SSH is also in the desktop, so we can go there, and we have to tell under which user account, and we just made the demo account for that. Uh, oh, I can, I can write that more concisely in a sort of email format the demo account at the server IP number and uh, this is SS SSH secure shell so there are all kinds of uh, <coughs> guards in there and now it asks if we uh, want to accept the encryption key that is found at the server. And you can use this to check if it's really the server you think you were connecting to. But we're fairly sure of that because I've just set it up myself and we have no external network connection. Then the next check, this is now permanent. And the check that's always done is the password, of course. We also made that demo just then on the server. So now we're in a prompt again in the terminal, but this time we're not on the local syllable desktop machine, we're on the syllable server server machine. And we can show that by using a, a Linux command that's not available on syllable. So this is the same command again that we use locally on the server, uh, the free command. And if we open an extra terminal in Syllable Desktop, you'll see that Syllable Desktop doesn't have the free command. So we're really connected with the Linux server here. And you can see that with the, the web server running, we're using 43 megabytes of memory. So when we started without the web server, it was 25, but Cheyenne pre-allocates uh, a fair amount of memory for those four uh, worker processes that we saw just a while ago. So it starts out with about slightly more than 14 B of memory. So you could run a web server on an old 64 megabyte machine. Now we have full access to the, the demo account here. See, we're in the, in the users, in the home directory, in the demo directory. We can use the LL alias to list. And uh, again, there are only the, the predefined desktop directories there that we don't need. But um, the, uh, the website directory isn't there yet we still need to make the website. Now to do that, um, we do that all in the graphical environment. By the way, we can, we can leave SSH. So we're now logged out from the Linux server. Now we're back in syllable desktop. Again, no free command. Um, we can do the same more or less with FTP. We can FTP to the server. So 
bit slow, uh, but I have to. I should get a question for a user account now. Ah, takes a while. Login failed. Um, oh, I have to. I have to add the, the user account. So I quit from the FTP shell. So I was in the server, but I wasn't logged in. I think it's with the L command. No. Or else fails read the manual. Um, should probably be able to do it the same way. As SSH. Probably takes so long because uh, we don't have a, a gateway in the name server. I think it's trying to, to find them in some operations. And it needs to time out on the name server before it understands the static IP network. See, it tried to do a hostname lookup. I'm still doing it the wrong way. Um, maybe I can log in here. I am in the shell. Is there an FTP login command? Or a user command? User. Not connected. Oh, we're not connected. Hmm. Now if we're not connected, um, what's the syntax? Don't know. Usually it asks for a username. with no login. for the time out again. Um, yeah. It says we're remote. Ah, now it properly asks for the username. And then the password of course. Ah, now we're finally logged in. Now I have sort of a Unix-like shell, but it, it is an FTP shell, so I can do ls for directory listing, and then we can see that we're in the, in the home directory, the same home directory that we got in through SSH. So you can go securely log in through SSH, and you can log in through FTP. To transfer files but that is insecure and especially because the, your password is uh, sent over the network unencrypted but it's uh, it's sufficient for our needs now and this is all manually in the in the consoles of all those programs but what we really want is to set up a website in the in the graphical syllable uh, <coughs> environment and then 
more or less comfortably upload it. So this is just for demonstration to show that we can log into the server and that we can log in through SSH or through FTP. And we can get at the files that are there. But the real task is to, uh, to upload files. <coughs> um, here's the home directory on Syllable Desktop. And I've put a demo directory on here. And here is a... Uh, um, Here are the, the parts of our, our, our web management program, our content, content, content management system that is written in Rebel. And a few months ago I made it work on the Rebel 3. And it, it was working on Rebel 2. And one of the reasons is that the Cheyenne web server is written in Rebel 2. So uh, with the CMS also written in Rebel 2, it can run in the same process as Cheyenne very efficiently. But we can't run Rebel 2 on Syllable Desktop because it's not open source. But Rebel 3 has an open source host environment that we have been running on, on Syllable Desktop for I think a year now. So now that the CMS also works on Rebel 3, we can run the CMS on Syllable Desktop. But I have to make a, a website and I'll just make a new directory and just like on the server I'll call it website doesn't really need to be called like that but uh, it's clear um, I'll open an extra filer because In the demo directory is also a small example website, and we need a few parts from that. Here's the Rebel Start script. I need to copy that into the new website. And I think if I open it now, I don't have a file type. If I go to info, and this is a very nice syllable thing, if I say this, I, if I give it, this works through extended file attributes. You can add an, an extended attribute to the file, you can give it a mime type, you can say this is plain text. Now if I refresh it, oh, <coughs> oh yeah. now, it, it, now it is marked as text file, and now it opens in the... Uh, in the standard syllable text editor. So this is a very small uh, start script in Rebel to kick off the, uh, <coughs> the, 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 the content management system. Uh, I need to check the paths because um, uh, I think this already works. We go one directory down looking for the main CMS program. And I think that's correct because uh, we're in the website or oh, we're in demo. So I need to go oh no, in, in demo yeah, in demo I have the program two. The program directory is here in demo, so the part should the path should already be correct. Uh, now the simplest way to start with a website, or oh, we can try it like this, see if it works already. I need to start the program from oh, the terminal, there goes my mouse. Because uh, Rebel 3 uh, is currently a uh, console. Now, Rebel 3 has a, a graphical environment, but at the moment that only runs on uh, Windows and it's been ported to Amiga OS. <coughs> and one of the tasks for this year is to get the, the graphical environment of Rebel 3 running on Syllable Desktop. But for now, I need to do it from the terminal. And we're in the home directory. 
So I go into that same demo folder and then I go into the website folder that we just created and in that website folder is the REPL start script and uh, the easiest way I can do it is if I set the executable bit and then I can immediately start the script without any rebel prefix and it should give me oh, something I can't find no it really wants to have a data directory so we, we will now see what the minimum <coughs> website is that we need to set up so it tells me I need to make a data directory or it won't work Try it again. Oh, it really wants the other directories as well. I was hoping it was going to work without them. So I need to make the model directory and that means I also make, need to make the template directory. Because the website in this system is uh, split in several layers. And they're, they're more or less following the model view pattern where the, the content is separated from the presentation. And that's reflected in these three directories. And the data directory is for the database. Oh. I need to give it. It's starting, trying to start the Rebel 3 GUI now from from the web, but we have no connection and there's no graphics system, so I have to abort this. It's no. waiting for a timeout again, so I'm going to restart it. Go to the website directory again. Same directory as in the graphical filer. And I'm going to ask the example script for its built-in help. And then it won't start the, the graphical environment. So this is the command line interface. <coughs> and there are really just a few commands. The one I just used for getting the help. Very simple one for getting the version of the content management system. And the other two commands are the real things. They're uh, to build the site and to publish it. So what happens if I build it? Well, there's only an empty site except for these three empty subdirectories. It builds it. And now we have an extra stage directory. And you see it appear automatically because Syllable Desktop has uh, node monitoring, which is called uh, Notify on, uh, on Linux. And uh, it means that if you have a, 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 a program open, it can monitor uh, files and directories for changes. So uh, the filer here has uh, a node monitoring on the, on the directory where it's in. So when the content management system creates this new stage directory, you see it automatically appear in the filer. And because the website is empty, the built website is also empty. But it already works. <coughs> now what's the, after we have set up this structure, what's the simplest website that we can make? Uh, the simplest way to, to define something is straightforward straight in a template one to one so we go into the template directory and uh, oh, to create a new file I have to do that in the, in the command line so I do that here oh. 
Here, here's that animated window switch the bus has been talking about. You don't see it animate now because the windows don't animate. But this is a real-time animated snapshot if something is moving in a window. You, you can make a file in the, in the file? No, it's all very primitive. Okay. There's a lot of work still needs to be done. And that's stuff that hasn't really changed in the past years. So I hope to, 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 to put that in, a, in fast forward uh, at a higher development speed if we have the, the graphical environment of Rebel 3 that I was just talking about. Once we have that, it becomes much easier to, to write small graphical tools for Silver. And then we can make this a lot faster. focus the terminal window again so I go into the template directory and I start the editor from the terminal with a new file I hope and let's do the, the standard hello world example but in a website the standard page is called index index.html let's just type hello into it hello world if we make it classic and I hope it can save it from a new file um, see if it's there yeah we have the file it's now here and it's recognized as an HTML file by the extension, but it's at this moment it's really a plain text file, of course, because we haven't written any HTML in it. If you, if you now would click on it, you wouldn't still see anything. Yeah, I'd get it in the in the web browser. Oh yeah. And the web browser understands how to display a simple uh, simple text file, so that's no problem. But this is the file. So now it the, this, this it is plain text. This is the web browser. No. Now the, the, it, it is plain text because oh, I only yeah, wrote yeah. text in it. Yeah. Uh, the file thinks it's HTML, but not because of a, a mime type, but because of the extension. Yeah. And uh, so the filer starts it in the web browser, and the web browser also knows how to, to show a plain text file, yeah. even though it's not HTML proper. Let's clean up this extra. Oh, this is on the server. We can leave that open. Um, but this is in the in the template directory. What we really want is to build the website in the stage, and the stage is still empty. So if I go to the terminal again, uh, oh, I should have opened the editor uh, independently. So I can do that from a terminal by ending it with an ampersand. Then I get the, uh, the, the editor window, but then the terminal is free again. So then I can enter the build command again, but I have to do that in the main directory of the website. Of the team it is in the browser. So here's the CMS again, so if I build it now, you see that it says that it's building a file. And the first time it wasn't, because there were no files. So now it sees that there's a file, and it builds it. So if I now go to the filer, uh, I also have two filers. Oh yeah. The stage was empty just then. But now we have the, the file, the template file has now been copied to the final destination in the stage directory. And again, this is uh, marked as an HTML file, but it's simple text. But the Webster browser knows how to show it anyway. Okay, now I want to make it a bit more complicated. I will want to make it really HTML.
And the point of making it HTML is, of course, that then you can apply layout. For example, we can make it uh, bold. Save it, control S. And now to show where we are, the, the build website in the stage is still the text version. <coughs> uh, but the template is now, oh, I've already got the, I didn't even expect that. It, ha it has folded it into the page template. Oh no, that's because I'm in the example site here. Uh, I need to do it like this. Here's the template. Here's the template. And the template is bold. But the stage, the built website, is still the version from back then. So if I build it again, it's processed again and now the version, the built version in the stage is now also the real HTML version in bold. Now what's the point of splitting this? The point is to, to separate uh, the, uh, the layout and the, and the content, the content and the presentation. So the point is, the simplest thing you can build is a simple text file. If you just write a text file, you've already got a site. And then you can develop it into something else, for example, real HTML. But you can also apply manipulations. If I put a code in here, a code is given between uh, dash star star dash and body is a special code where uh, main content gets inserted so now it's not a plain text anymore and it's not a plain HTML file anymore it's now a template because I'm now uh, putting a, a, a macro in it that needs to be filled in and if I now build it you'll get an error or really a warning in this case because it does process the file because body is not defined I haven't defined the body anywhere so here in the stage I get the error message in the result and you see it's still bold so it has filled in the bold but in the bold is now the error message so what I need to do is define that body value. And uh, the simplest way to do that is in a model file. And here in the template I have an index, and now I need a corresponding index file in the model. So I have to do that from the terminal again. In the model directory I want an index file, but the models are all text files, as we'll see. <laughs> and here I can define the body value. And I simply use the value that used to be in the template. So in, in a very simple model text file, I, I define the body value. If I now build it again, here in the model we have the simple text file. In the template I have the template where the parameter is defined. And in the built result, I now have something really different. The built result is now the resulting website. <clears throat> where the value of the body is filled in 
in the template. So I have now uh, separated the, the, the real value, the payload, from the presentation because the presentation where it's made bold and where it's made HTML is now in the template and the value, the payload, is in the model. And the model corresponds one-to-one -to, -one to files in the resulting website. So the template has the structure of the website, in this case a simple index front page. And the model also has the structure of the website. But there's also a different way to do it in the central database. And if I want to define simple values in the central database, I need a, a text file by the same name. And like the model, these are just text files. And in the same way as in the body, in the model, I can define the, the body here. And to show that it's different, I make the text halfway Dutch. And what will happen if we build it again? So now, now build the site again. And I go to the result in the stage. Then we still see that we still have the Dutch text, uh, the English text. And that is because uh, the model has priority over the data. So if I give the body a different name, 